Hey, what's up? Last time we were able to create this register screen and also the login screen. So you see we can navigate between here and here. So in this one I want us to add validation so that when the user clicks submit and they had not filled in this form, then we can go ahead and, sh and maybe highlight the, er the inputs with, with errors in red and also show an error down here. Okay, so how do we do that? First off, we need a way to have the state for the errors and also the state for the form so that we can define if the individual form inputs have errors. So we're going to go to our screen, then where we have register. So here, we are going to need to have some state for the for the form content and also the one for the errors. So here, we are going to be using the use state hook to manage our state. So to use the use state hook, you want to do use state. So when you use state, you have to give it an initial value you want to start with. Now our form will start without anything, but then it gives us two things. So the things it gives us, it gives us it gives us the current state value and also the function to change that state. So here we can have, I'm going to call it form and then a function to change that form. So I'm going to call that function set form. Okay, like this. So if we save, you notice know, you get that. Then I'm going to have the one for the error. So the error, I'm going to call it errors. Then it's going to start out as set errors. Okay. Then we are going to have a function that uh, that's going to get called every time a user changes something here so that we can tell if the user had uh, maybe changed some value in the input. So let's do it here. So the function is going to be called on change. So it's going to be a function. So whenever we call it, we are going to be passing it a name and also a value like this. Okay, so when we call it, we want to be updating our form state. So inside here, we can now just say set form. So in the set form, we want to be picking everything else that is in the form. So we're going to spread over everything that's already in the form. Because if we just set a new value, it would override everything. But we want to change the state only for this kind, for this current input or the input with this name that calls this function. So here we can now target that very input by its name. We need a comma here. And then we want to change it, its value to the new value like that. So now that we have this, we need to pass these ones down. So we need to pass form. Then we also need to pass errors. Okay, so we need a function that's going to get called every time a user clicks the submit button. So here I'm going to have the on submit. So on submit, we don't need this. So in here, now we can maybe do a validation. So in here, we do some validations. Okay, not validations. Okay, so let's pass this one's done. So let's pass on submit. Will be on submit. Let's pass on change. So now that we are passing them, we need to pick them inside the child component. So we are going to go to the register component down here. Now here we can destructure them out like this. Then let me remove this syntax stuff. Make sure it's uh, just being destructured properly. Similarly for the form and also for the errors. Okay, so once we have this, now everywhere we have the input, we need to have an unchanged text. So unchanged text, we want to set it to our own. We want to call our own with the name and the value. So we're going to call unchanged and then we're going to call it with an object which will have a name. So this one, the name will be first name. Like this. Let's set this one to... A capital N, then the value we can do value. So whenever we call on change text, it gives us the current value of that input. So that's the one we want to send up there. So with ES6, you can just see if the name of the key and the value are the same, you can just send one and it will do great. Okay, so once we have this, now everything is looking good. But if we have errors, we want to also send those. So if you have errors, we also want to show those. So since we are already putting them in, we can pass error. To the input and then we can say if there is an error for the first name so also we are going to be doing the same thing for the other inputs now i'm gonna go here and duplicate this here obviously this is gonna be for the last name then this is gonna be for the email then this is gonna be for the password so i'm going to also copy paste we don't need, oh, we need this. Then this is going to be for the password. 
Of course, this shouldn't be email name. Sorry, it should be email. Okay, so we have that there, that there. On the username, we don't have it yet. So this should be username. Errors for the username. Okay, so now that we have this, we need a way to, to tell when a user is trying to submit. So for us to be able to know when the user is submitting, we need to add an on press to our button. So we can come over here, our custom button and add an on press. So on our on press, we are going to hook it up with our on submit, which we should have in the props. Okay, so every time the user clicks here, let me bring up my console just so we know what's going on. So every time the user clicks here, let's do a console log here for what's in the form. Okay, so now I'm going to click submit and you see that we have the form. So the form is empty, meaning we can now do, a valid do validations and show our errors there. So in here, you notice that in the form, we have like a key value and every key is sent basing on the input, meaning if in here we had maybe the username, actually let me bring this one here and also have it here. So every time we call the on change, we, we send the name to be like username. Meaning here when we set the, the key, it's going to have maybe username, something like password, something like email, and then the value will be this. So meaning here we can check if the key is there. So we can do something like if not form dot username, username then we can we can add to these errors so here we can say set errors so when you call set errors or set state you're going to be getting the previous state so i'm going to be writing it like this so when you get the previous state then you can return a new state so here we can return a new state object so this new state object will contain everything in the previous state and we are going to be changing the value for the value for the username error so here we can add username, then we say something like, please fill this field, or please add a username, and save. And then, once we have this, now we can test it out. So if we come here and click submit, let's say we click submit, you notice that we have please add a username added to our input, okay? So that's looking good. So let's do the same thing for the other ones. So I'm going to now copy and paste this. Let's be first name, last name, email, password. Okay. So it's just going to be first name, last name, email, password. Okay, so of course we need to change the keys, otherwise we won't be seeing the errors on the other inputs. Should be last name, hey, should be first name. Okay, so now, of course this should change to first name. Should have used the generic one. First name, last name, email, then you have password okay so now if we click submit you see we have all our inputs being marked as having errors so this is all looking good now what we want to do is be able to remove these errors if a user starts to maybe change something so they can change that is in the in the on change which would be like right here we can check if this value is maybe not empty so we can do something like this so we can say if value is not empty it's not equal to nothing then okay so if it's not nothing then what you can do is remove the errors so we want to remove the errors but we want to remove them for the only this input okay so what, what you can do is still we, we are going to need to say to set errors so i'm gonna copy this then this of course will be the current input which you can get from name so we do that then the value won't set it to null okay so this is only working for when the inputs are empty but if you had like specific 
inputs you wanted to check let's say you wanted to check if the password is six characters long you would specify if the name is password and check it here else you check the values that are required actually i think we are going to do something quite similar to that so now if a user came in here and typed something you see that that one goes away so if they put it back like this you see it doesn't come back but we want to set it again so the best way to do it will be to now when it's not equal to nothing then we set the errors then when it's equal to nothing we want to say them that this field is required so now we can say this field is required or we can even actually pick the name but what we'll do is just say this field is required and save okay so now we can enter text if we remove it we get this field is required if we put out we get the errors so yeah if we type it goes away okay so looking good so if we type here it goes if we type here it goes so for the last name it's not going i believe we need to check something last name okay let's check how last name we how we are calling last name so we believe this should be let's see if we go here you see first name is like that then this should be first name oh we don't have the on change here sorry so let's have the on change also this should be first last name okay let's have it even for the email so for the email we can just have like email here okay so so have it for the password okay so now let's say we start typing in username so say Chris here see the error goes away we got first name and remove it the error comes back if we let's say type let's say text so when we have an error and the input is focused the input should be red and not primary so what you can do is we're going to go to the text input and also make some small change there so here we are returning the cars we want to first check if there is an error so we can actually remove move this one up okay so let's bring it here so if there is an error it should always return danger so here if we remove this there is an error if we start typing it goes away and yeah so that's looking good even here things are looking good but if you wanted to let's say test for something specific like this password here so you notice that now i can come and enter the password it goes away but it's not really meeting all the requirements so let's say we wanted it. you would come here and add a specific check so i'm gonna go here so before we we set the errors to null we want to first check what it is so here we can check if the name equals password because we know because we set it we send it when we are calling on change so if it's password then let's check here okay so we're gonna check if it's password then now we can check if the value is uh, so we can check if the value dot length is greater than five okay so if it's greater than five then everything will be fine but if it's not so i'm gonna check if it's less than six then we won't set the errors so i'm going to now actually set the errors like this okay make sure we have it in there then this should be oh it should even be the same so here we can just say this field needs minimum six characters so now if we came here and typed password you see that it means eight characters and then of course now when we meet them it's not actually removing it but what we want to do is also add an, another else right here that removes it so now we can copy this and also have an else here so else also make sure it's removing that error so now out it starts out to be required now when we start typing we see that now it needs six when we reach six it goes away and things are looking good so i believe this gave us an insight on how we can validate our forms 
without needing to install any other third party library but just by controlling our state and writing some if statements in react native all right so that's gonna do it for now i believe you can build on this to now build your validation and make sure that the users don't have to submit incomplete data to your form so thanks guys for watching if you like the video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and i will talk to you in the next one thanks for watching